Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, welcome everyone to the uh, last Juma in Ramadan 2021, May 7th. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyat a'malina. Man yahdiha Allah wa fala mudillallah wa man yudhidhu fala hadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu. هدوا أن محمد عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praises belong to Allah We praise him and we ask him for guidance and for forgiveness we seek protection in Allah from the malice of our own souls and from the evils of our own actions. Whoever Allah guides, no one can lead him or her astray. And whoever he leads astray, no one can lead him or her back to the straight path. I bear witness that there is no other deity except Allah by himself, no associates with him. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. O you who have believed, be mindful of Allah and do not die as, except as a Muslim. O you who have believed, be mindful of Allah and always say a word directed towards the truth so that he can make your conduct whole and sound <clears throat> and forgive you for your sins. <clears throat> and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has attained the highest achievement. My brothers and sisters, Ramadan is almost over. This month, we've experienced hope, calm, rest, peace, but if you're like me, then perhaps there's also some stress, fatigue, frustration, restlessness, body aches, headaches, and the like. And these are things we normally hope to avoid, yet we know that these things always accompany this month. But it's not just fasting during Ramadan that can create a stressful environment. Outside of Ramadan and over the past year with COVID-19, COVID we've learned to work from home, for those of us that are working from home. And I understand from those that are working from home that longer hours are the norm. I understand that work from home has become working all the time. And in and outside of Ramadan, fatigue also occurs from lack of sleep from work, family obligations, stress, illness, and the, and the like. So we don't just have aches during our aging bodies, sore joints, chronic disease. We also have financial concerns, family dynamics, and societal issues that loom large in some of our minds and create stress. These are uncomfortable situations and uncomfortable positions to be in. And it all starts when we're young. We're placed into uncomfortable position, situations when we're school children, and we're tasked with learning and can be frustrating. And folks, one of you, your microphone is off of mute. Please make sure you're muting. We're hearing some feedback. So again, it all starts when we're young. We're placed into uncomfortable situations and positions when we're school children. We're tasked with learning and it can be frustrating sometimes. And then there's adolescence. And when we're teenagers, it's frustrating to learn how to fit in. There's peer pressure, there's awkwardness, a lot of stress, but we get through it. And then for those of us that are adults, there's a lot more to get stressed out about, but we get through it. The common response to stress is to avoid it. We'd run away from it and certainly not to confront it. But the key thing here, folks, is to remember that feeling uncomfortable, feeling out of place, feeling frustrated, these are all times where we are actually growing. We're being pushed past what we perceive are our limits. So perhaps these feelings of frustration and stress are not the worst thing in the world. To be clear, I'm talking about frustrate, sorry, situations that we can get out of. You know, the discomfort at work or school, we can leave. A frustrating relationship, maybe you can leave that. Financial hardship, we can, we can perhaps get out of that. I'm not talking about people who are victims of abuse, victims of war, neglected children, homeless. These are not situations, I'm talking about, that's a different story. Those are situations you can't get out of for a long time. I'm talking about the, the less things. So consider stories about the prophets. You know, prophethood wasn't all great and easy and beautiful all the time. Once they were called to prophethood, they couldn't run away. 
but we do have examples where even when even where they wanted to run away from prophet from the trauma of prophecy the prophet yunus alayhi salam he ran away from his people in frustration and anger the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa after first receiving revelation wanted to throw himself off a mountain he thought he was going crazy recall mary alayhi alayhi salam mother of jesus she wailed during childbirth that if she were only dead instead of being alive Moses, Musa alayhi salam, he even asked God to have his brother Harun help him. I can't do this alone. Recall in Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter 21, verse 87. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَذَنُّونِ إِذْ ذَهَبَ مَغَادِبًا تَظَنَّ أَنْ مَنْ تَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ فَنَادَ فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ and remember the man with the whale when he went off angrily, thinking we could not restrict him. But then he cried out in the deep darkness, there is no God but you. Glory be to you. I was wrong. And then in Surah Maryam, chapter 19, verse 23, قالت, يا ليتني مت قبل هذا وكنت نسي نسيا and when the pains of childbirth drove, drove her to cling to the trunk of a palm tree, she, meaning Mary, exclaimed, I wish I had been dead and forgotten long before this. So just imagine what drives people of that stature and that time and era to run away and wish they were dead. You know, Yunus's anger and frustration, Prophet Yunus alayhi salam, his anger and frustration at his people was real. And he ran away into the belly of the whale. And then he found out, he realized the only way out was to turn to God, Al-Fattah, the opener. Consider yourself when you are trapped in the belly of the whale and there's no way out. Perhaps that dark closed space is a metaphor for our own desires, our own vanities, our own wants and our own needs. You've heard that expression, it's all in your head. Well, we can find ourselves trapped in a situation of our own making. For example, when we inflate the significance of not having some material thing. For example, when we worry about what's going to happen when we're dealing with sickness and so on. When we place those things at the forefront of our minds where they dominate our thoughts, then what we're doing is isolating ourselves into a dark place similar to the situation Yunus Alayhi Salaam found himself in. We hold these thoughts and these issues so high in our minds that they become our North Star. I've used that term before. Remember, those things don't respond to our worship. And so we become angry and discontent and lash out. We find that we, we place these things before Allah. So then consider Ramadan and its effect on us. We're now into the last few days, and if you're like me, it's been a month. Are you tired? Sure. Are you weak? Sure. Possibly. Are you happy with how your Ramadan has gone so far? Perhaps yes? Perhaps no, perhaps both. If it hasn't been spiritually uplifting, or rather if it's been stressful and frustrating and just blah, then for, reflect for a minute and consider why. Consider if you've been focusing on Allah first or yourself first. Am I thinking about my problems and my hunger and my fatigue? If so, then no wonder I'm frustrated and hangry and tired. It's 30 days of torture and the end is so close yet so far. If this describes you, that's fine. And we still have just under a week to turn it around. Listen to the following verse and listen to the importance of remembering Allah with dhikr and prayer. This is a verse that struck with me recently. I was listening to so a reciter a couple weeks ago and I remember this verse in Surah Al-Hash in verse 59, 19. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Do not be like those who forget God. So God causes them to forget their own souls. They are the rebellious ones. I'll say it again. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Do not be like those who forget God, because then they forget themselves. They are the rebellious ones. And elsewhere in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah 152, so remember me and I shall remember you. Give thanks to me and, disp and, do not, and disbelieve not in me. So put yourself first and your soul is going to be lost. 
the, the, exegi the people who interpret the Quran, they interpret this ayah to mean those that when God makes those who forget, those that for, those God that God makes those who forget God forget their souls, means that those who cease, that they who cease to listen to what benefits the soul and do what will purify it. Meaning, when we do not do our dick or thinker of Allah, we end up being lost, and whatever we are doing really doesn't benefit ourselves. By being mindful of Allah at all times, we will be doing what's better for our own souls and avoiding what's not so good for our souls. Pause for a minute and reflect and consider that Ramadan is supposed to be difficult, but it's difficult only when we think of ourselves and we think about the disruption in our lives. If you're an adult listening to this then or watching, then you have responsibilities, perhaps work and perhaps some family. You have a schedule, things to get done, and Ramadan messes with that schedule. If you're a student, the same thing happens for sure. Exams are coming up and how are you supposed to deal with that when you're fasting? You have papers, there are midterms, you have social life, you have hangouts. All those things are on pause, they're delayed, or they're just not going to happen. In this month, you are no longer first. We're no longer first. Ramadan is first. And since we're fasting for the sake of Allah, in reality, in this month, Allah comes first. And that's what this month is about. It's not about going hungry or being tired. The struggle this month is to refocus on Allah and placing Allah at the center of our lives. I say this saying of mine, and I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you and for the rest of Muslims. So ask him for forgiveness. He is the forgiver, the merciful. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the name of Allah, all exaltations be belong to Allah. Peace and blessings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So folks, my brothers and sisters, this is where the growth comes from in Ramadan. Changing our mindset from a focus on our tiny part of space-time and towards a focus on the Almighty. That's where relief from stress and frustration will come from. That's where this month becomes a month that we look forward to when it begins and a month that we get sad about when it's going to end. As we fast, instead of thinking about our hungry, hunger and being hangry, these are things that are temporary and will pass for most of us for those of us who have food and a home. Instead of thinking about being hungry, pause and reflect on the divine. Pause and perform dhikr. Be mindful during salah, during prayers. Eid is going to be here soon. It's going to be here in less than a week. And we'll come out of this and hopefully with our spirits will be full from prayer and contemplation and dhikr. This challenging month of going without the things that we want and crave gives you some time to spend with your creator. And we come out stronger for it. And that's the point of this khutbah. Stress and frustration push us to what we push us through and past what we perceive are our limits and make us grow. Think about that. In school, when with new information, it is stressful and frustrating to learn it, but then we realize that we can do it and it becomes part of our knowledge. We've grown. When we're dealing with family trauma at home, eventually we get through it and become hopefully more resilient. Allah places these challenges in our path so that we learn and we learn that we're and we learn that we are adaptable and that we can survive that challenge. Remember in chapter 94 verse 5, in the in So for truly where there is hardship there is also ease. So when it comes to Ramadan, we have an opportunity to focus either on our personal trouble and pain or we focus on Allah with sincere prayer, sincere remembrance and dhikr, with good and kind acts to our family and our neighbors and friends, and asking Allah for succor and help. Another tactic, consider the 99 attributes of Allah. Read the list of the names and stop at the one that resonates with you right now. Pause and reflect on that name. Again, I'm going to plug Osama Malik, the Muslim space chaplain. Every morning after Fajr, he has these dhikr sessions where he's reviewing the names of Allah. There's still a lot more to go. So right after you finish your suhoor or your seri, log on and watch the talk. He's showing us how we can implement and act out these attributes in our lives. So when we ask for forgiveness, let's also forgive those around us. 
when we ask for goodness, let's practice a, mind of, a mindset of goodness towards everything around us. When we ask for healing, let's act with compassion so that it can provide some comfort to those around us so that they can heal in some small way. By doing this, it changes the stress of fasting and hunger and fatigue into action. We're no longer thinking about us, rather we're thinking about how to help the other. To be able to act kindly with forgiveness, with patience, while under the stress and fatigue of fasting isn't easy. But if we can do it, just imagine how easy it will be and so much easier it's going to be when we're not hangry, when we're not tired, when we're not stressed out, when our schedules aren't all upside down, once Ramadan is over. So the more of these acts that we can do, the more fruitful our Ramadan will be. We'll come out more resilient, more kind, kinder, with a better relationship with, our, with Allah, al razaq The best part of it is that there's still time to turn this around. If your month has been, eh, so far, you still have about a week to go. So have a growth mindset, a growth body set, and dive into Ramadan and embrace the fast, embrace the lack of sleep, embrace the disruption to the routine. It's an opportunity. Take this last week to really focus your relationship on cultivating a relationship with your maker. We're going to meet him in a few years today. You don't know. This way, after Eid next week, we can continue those acts and inshallah, they'll be easier to perform. Act with kindness, with goodness, and turn away from those things that can get our minds stuck in the belly of that whale. What's stressing us out can become our gods and displace Allah. By doing so, we wrong our own souls. And just like Eunice prayed, we pray. Remember, there is no God except Allah, and we praise Him. Ibad Allah, inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dhul qurba wa yanha an al fahsha'i wal munkari wal bagh. Ya'adakum la'allakum tadakkaroon. Udhkur Allah al-Azim yadhkurukum. Washkuruhu yadzidkum. Wastaghfiruhu yagfir lakum. Wattaqum. Wattaquhu yaj'al lakum min amrukum makhrija. O servants of Allah, Allah commands the justice, the doing of good, and liberality the kith and kin. He forbids all shameful deeds and injustice and rebellion. He instructs you so that you can remember. Remember Allah is the supreme in glory and he will remember you. And be thankful to him and he will increase you in bounty. And seek forgiveness from him and he will forgive you. And have taqwa, be mindful of Allah, have piety. And he'll make a way out for you for whatever issues you're in. So thank you brothers and sisters for being here today. Uh, this is our last Ramadan, the Juma al Wada, the Goodbye Friday. Uh, there's still time. If you have not given your Zakat al Fitr, Muslim Space does distribute Zakat al Fitr up until Eid. So it's a suggested donation. It's for $10. Remember, this Zakat is to feed those who don't have a way to feed themselves on Eid. So this is still going to go out. Uh, you can uh, use Venmo, it's at Muslim Space, or through PayPal. It's paypal.me slash forward space Muslim Space. Please put a little term zakat or fidya in the notes so that uh, Muslim Space knows where to send that money. Use that money. Again, uh, join Muslim Space after your Fajr, starting at uh, 5.45. Yosema Malik is going over the 99 attributes of Allah. Um, last one will be on May 12th. Uh, also, every night, 7.15 p.m. Central Time. This is all Central Time, U.S. Central Time. Uh, nightly Quran recitation. Again, you can uh, log in online. The last Ramadan halqa will be tomorrow, 4 to 5.30 p.m. Environmental justice, dignity, and our Islamic duty. So two exciting speakers tomorrow, uh, Sarah Latif and Corey Majid. They're going to be talking about human, about affirming and elevating God's honor to humankind. Uh, they're going to be from, they're from Green Ramadan. It's going to be interactive. There'll be a live Q&A. They've been fantastic. So please spend an hour tomorrow, uh, Saturday, May 8th. You need to register for that. Last Ramadan for kids, Muslim Space event is going to be on Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Time. Last arts and crafts activity. They've been so much fun. So make sure you log in. And it's always recorded if you can't make it. Ramadan wellness, or there's going to be a uh, next Wednesday, 11. There'll be a healing, attunement, and meditation. And this Sunday, 5.30, 6.30 p.m., the last yoga series. Folks, Eid Mubarak coming up. Eid's coming on it's May 13th. We're going to have an in-person prayer, 9 a.m. 
It's an outdoor COVID safe aid service. Uh, Faze is going to be doing the Tekbir and the Eid Chutbah. Uh, I don't know his last name, but Faze, he's a great guy. Really good. He's a really good speaker, really beautiful voice. Um, make sure you go to the website, musaspace.org forward slash Ramadan to see the announcements. Please register. There's limited space. We already have about 100 people showing up. Uh, there's going to be three sections, a men's section, a women's section, and then a family section, trying to keep everyone, if you're COVID cluster, keep yourselves together. Bring your own prayer mats. There won't be access to bathrooms, so make sure you have a do it when you come in. 9 a.m. It's weather permitting. If weather's bad, it's going to be canceled. There's no indoor. And there's going to be refreshments. Uh, that's it. Last thing, on Sunday, May 30th, there's going to be a graduation dinner. We'll announce that next time as well. And that's pretty much it, folks. So uh, how you all doing? How you hanging in there? <laughs>